SEO and metadata are very important for most of the businesses because they want to be indexed into search engines like Google or Bing or whatever. And to do that with Next.js, we have tools that help us to set this SEO directly into our application. Either it's going to be static or either it's going to be dynamic. So let's get back to our application. And into the layout, here we see that we've got our metadata object with a title called create next app and a description. So if I go back to my app and I look actually into my HTML, so I'm going to go there here and I'm going to go to elements and I'm going to go to the head and I'm going to zoom a little bit, we can see that we've got our title called create next app and we've got our description. So this is on the layout, which means that on every page I'm going to go, I'm going to have this metadata. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to index every page and have metadata on every page, you don't necessarily want to have only your layout with metadata, but every page. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going just to change the title and I'm going to say my application main title. And here, this is the description, the main description of my application. Exactly. So when I come back and I update, we can see that the title and the meta name change with the description. Let's now come back to my main page. I got this quick main page. And what I can do is just to come back here. So I used to have my layout, which is here. And I got my metadata with my type metadata on the top. So I can import back my type metadata and I can import my metadata in here. It would work exactly the same, but on the page.ts6 only, not on all the application. And it would be the same on every page, in profile, in about, etc., etc. So here I'm going to be uh, just concise. I'm going to say my page title, and this is a description. Okay, so now I got my page home. We got my page title. And when I come back in here, we see that I got my layout. So if we come back, I got my layout with my application main title. This is the main description. So if I come back, and I look at my head, suddenly I got my page title and not the layout metadata. Because here at this step, on this page, okay, on main page, I define a metadata. So this metadata, the page level, is uh, as, actually as a priority on the layout metadata. Okay, so I got here the metadata specifically about the page. But if I go on the profile page and here we've got some logic in here, I don't got any metadata and I'm using it as a client component. So I'm going to go to slash profile and on slash profile, if I look at the head, I got actually the layout metadata. So pages will not have any metadata defined, will inherit from the layout.tsx if you put some metadata in here. Let's come back to the main page now. And here I can put way more SEO elements that can help me actually to have a better indexation or just a better look when I share it on the social media. And to do that, I can use Open Graph. Open Graph actually will help me to create a, a link for social media that will be helpful. So here I can put exactly the same. So I can put the title, the description, and I can put also the URL of my website. So mywebsite.com basically. And I can put the site name also. Here is going to be Code with Guillaume. Okay, Code with Guillaume, there we go. And here, which is probably the most interesting about this lesson, is that in here I can put images. So let's say that I would have an image and here I don't get any image to display, but on an endpoint I would have uh, my website.png. Okay. Here I can put this and when I will share it on social media, I will get actually the image displayed. Otherwise I would have an empty image. So here I can put the width and basically the width most of the time it's 
1260 pixels on width and on 8 it's supposed to be 800 so there we go so I could have one image but of course as an array I could have several images that I would like to display and sometimes they give you the opportunity uh, to check which image you want to display uh, it, if it's going to be on Facebook Twitter um, if you share a link like this they will ask you for what image you want to add so here I'm, a, I'm going to add some other uh, things. So here it's going to be English, English, okay, as a code. Well, you got to look at everything that you want to put in here. And if you are really into the SEO for your application, you can add as many data as you want to this metadata object. Okay, this was just for static generation. We didn't show the uh, type of generation yet in this course, we're going to see it later. But here, this is only when we uh, generate static content. But sometimes we want to have dynamic content, such as here in the profile ID, we've got a dynamic page with a, a post, post ID, etc, etc. So here I'm just going to delete this folder and I'm going to take a, a very, really basic um, uh, case. So let's say that we got posts and um, in this post we're going to have an ID and this dynamic ID is going to have a page.tsx. So what I can do is just to go on my main page here and just put a post ID in here and it's going to be post ID down there and let's try if it works. So I go back to my app, I'm going to slash post and I'm going to, hey, okay, I'm just going to catch and here I got my post ID in here. So what I would like to do is that I would like to request an API and with the ID, catch the data of a post. So at first I want to catch the parent, so remember, in here, I can catch the params this way. So I got my post and here I got the params.id. Okay, so I'm going to get back. And here we see that I got the ID, hey, so it can be a number, it can be a UUID or whatever. We can catch the params in here. So what we would do as a client component, we would fetch uh, from here with the param ID. Okay, but the problem here is that if you do that, it's going to be on the client side and when the Google bot is going to pass on your pages, your page will be completely empty because it's not going to wait for your, uh, actually for uh, your post to be fetched. So the thing we want to do, we want to fetch before as a dynamic parameter and an asynchronous function, okay? So what I'm going to do in here is just to use, let's say that we would have a function called fetch post and this function would be actually an asynchronous function with a post id which would be the string and you understand that already we can catch this parameter here at the component uh, level but also at the level of the application so what i would do in here is to say hey i would like to fetch a post and if this post exists so fetch and here it's going to be from instance from a post uh, API and we want to pass we want to pass what the post ID so if I want to pass the post ID like this I got to put it dynamic there we go and here we would say that it's a method uh, we can put our method get there we go and we would like to return the post.json so when do I call this function not inside the post ID here but we would use a function that is provided by next.js which is generate metadata. So you got to write this function this way, metadata, to be uh, actually uh, detected by Next.js. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to export an async function called meta, generate metadata. And this function is going to take what? The params that we got in here. Exactly like a middleware, we can catch the um, the request. Here we can catch also the params. And this is where we are going to call our function. So we'll get our post that is up there. So I'm going to say await and it's going to be fetch post params.id. 
And necessarily, we got a params on ID because we are on the ID page. And what we want to return in here, we want to return the title of our post. So here, what I got, I got actually my post here, dot title, which, because here, what I'm going to do as a return, I'm going to have actually, in this case, I'm going to have my post with my title, et cetera, et cetera. If your models change, of course, don't put what I put here, just adapt the response to your model. So I would have my title. I would have my description, which is post.0. Dot description, etc., etc. Here, you understood that we return the same model as here, but completed with the post that we got up here. All right, so I created an API endpoint under post slash ID, and I got this ID. And what I'm doing is just I'm looking for a post, uh, which is here, and I'm trying to find, okay, I'm trying to find my post that is existing with the params ID. So if I get back here and I try to go directly on this endpoint that I've put online, I got my post with the number 12. Actually, it's a bit dumb because if I put one, I just got an empty object. So what I want to do is just to come back. I'm going to go here. And instead of having this here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove, got my endpoint. Usually you are supposed to put it into an environment file, okay? Okay, so now I got my post here on my generate metadata. And what I did, I created a post endpoint where I'm returning a list of posts here just for the example with the ID 12. I'm going to look for the post 12. And I will see if I got my hello and my amazing post that are going to be completed here in this generate metadata that is going to be returned automatically. Type post 12 and look at this. There we go. We see that I got post 12 and we see that I got hello and I got my amazing post directly inside my header, which is coming actually from my endpoint. So here, this example was actually the dynamic SEO set on a page with a dynamic parameter. Depending on your strategy, if you want to do static or dynamic fetching for your SEO, you would have to use these two different methods to set your SEO data into your application. It's also depending on what kind of application you are building. If you work on a marketplace and you want to be indexed uh, into Google because your products are going to be indexed inside all the searches, you would have to really focus on how to set up the right SEO every time you are going to add a new product to your platform and every time you are going to build again your application. So basically, what you would do is to go to the page with your dynamic parameter for this example, and you would have to work on setting with generate metadata the dynamic parameter of the page you want to generate. 